I'm Susan Lori Parks, and um, we've been doing this show in the lobby of the Public Theater for, uh-oh, I don't have my video on. Jordan, I'm just talking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there you are. Hey, we've been doing the show in the lobby of the Public Theater for, for 11 years, and we've also been doing it in various venues all around the world, and HowlRound, so thank you for the Public Theater for helping us organize this. HowlRound came on a few years ago and has been helping us live stream and certainly has been helping us bring this format to you guys. We been we did it four weeks in a row and then we took a couple weeks off and now we're back. And it's good to see some familiar faces and some new faces. And uh, so this is what we do. We work together for 20 minutes and then we uh, talk for the remaining time about your work and your creative process. We have uh, plenty of time to do that. And um, what we don't have time for is for you to read specific work and for me to give feedback on it. But we always like to talk about your work and your creative process because we like to keep it open and accessible to everybody. And Audrey is going to tell us how to get in touch should you want to ask a question. Thanks, SLT. Yeah, so if you want to ask a question and you are inside of the Zoom, all you need to do is click on the button that says raise your hand. It's likely in a participant tab at the bottom of your screen if you're on a laptop or the top if you're on an iPad or tablet. Um, if you have any issues with that, feel free to shoot me a chat in the group chat and I will help you out. Um, if you're watching uh, the stream on HowlRound.tv, you can tweet at us at at WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound. Um, and if we have time, we will get to those questions. And you can also uh, tweet at the Public Theater at at Public Theater NY uh, or go to our Instagram. Uh, and that's it. So many ways. So many ways. So many ways to get in touch. Okay, so we're going to work. <laughs> 20 minutes and uh, then we're going to talk with you guys after. Okay, here we go. Beep.
Yeah. Yeah. Hello. All right. So that was 20 minutes of working. And now we have the uh, rest of the time we got for questions from you guys about your work. All Anybody right. got a question? Yes, we have somebody who actually just wrote to the chat. Um, oh, cool. And where did they go? Armando, I'm going to unmute you. Can you say your question out loud, Armando? Because I know you typed it to me, but unfortunately it has erased from my chat. Huh. Armando, are you there? Hear me? Yeah. I, I can hear you faintly. Hey, cool. Um, thank you all. Thank you, uh, Susan Lori, for, for doing this. Um, oh, you can't see my face. Oh, there you are. Cool. You're here. Hey, uh, um, hey there. I made it. Um, but yeah, thank you. I, I actually um, was working on this piece and, and doing these uh, workshops with you have, as you helped me try to process this, um, the crazy. And so, um, so my question is, um, I'm working on this piece, which is becoming this sort of hybrid theatrical piece where I'm taking a public figure um, and I'm taking a classical text, it's a Shakespearean, I'm trying to mash together. And I'm, and I'm I'm trying to say some things. Things are happening, right? Social things are happening, social commentaries about race identity, all those things. I'm just trying to figure out how to make it work where it's not also didactic, where it's fun and it can be crazy and stupid and it can be like what it wants to become. It's kind of like this hydra. And so I'm just uh, asking for somebody to like structures for your work that you've built into your script. Um, and if you can just kind of talk through those things, I appreciate it. Talk about structure. Uh, in terms of, well, there, there, I mean, different structures for different things, you know what I mean? I mean, form, there was a great poet, Charles Olson, who said form is never more an extension than an extension of content. So the idea is that form and content are together, you know, they're, they're one thing. So you can't just say, I think I'll just have the form like this and then shove the content into it. You know what I mean? Form grows out of content and content grows out of form. So if you have like a a, char a known character and a Shakespearean kind of text, then um, I think you've got your structure already, right? Cause you've got kind of a Shakespearean text, right? I mean, are you gonna follow that structure? Or? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of am, um, but I'm like sort of taking it, it's kind of, I'm taking the structure, right? Of the play. And I'm sort of, I'm almost like creating a rehearsal. It's almost like this rehearsal that's happening of the play. And um, this, this sort of like strange overlapping of, you know, the, the public figure and that. So I, I'm obviously using the Shakespearean um, text, right? And, and, the, and the narrative, but I'm also trying to like pull away from it and almost show like how this is problematic in itself, if that, if that makes sense. It does, but I don't know how to give you feedback because you know it's it's a it sounds like a great project. I, I mean, how far are you along with it? Are you have you written a first draft or not a not a complete first draft? It's right now like there's scenes, there's like monologues, there's some scenes, um, you know, and I have like all this kind of like stage direction and like notes around w what's happening. Uh huh. And do you know the story that you want to tell? Not the theme not the message but the basic story like what happens to the characters involved yeah i feel like what's i feel like the story that sort of wants to stay around is um just sort of like how you know how as a let's say as a, a person of color um you sort of try to navigate these these systems that are not created for you um and you sort of try to like triumph and you try to push yourself and in order to do that it's almost like you have to break it's like you have to break and you sort of put on these masks to get to this place and then what happens when you get beyond even the understanding of yourself or even what your identity is past to a point that's like almost a point of no return and that's the story you mean you see what i'm saying like got you right you're right i mean so as much as you can focus on I mean because that sounds like the kind of issue you know the theme you know as much as you can also focus on the story 
like, what does your character want? What are they doing? Mm. What happens to them in this scene? What happens to them in this scene? I mean, could you think of any Shakespeare, any, you know, one of Shakespeare's plays that we know and love? It's a story about a character or a series of characters, right? First mm. and foremost, that's what it is. Okay. And then all the themes come kind of later, you know, um, gotcha. as you can, as you, as we unpack the play, the themes and the issues and the relevance to today or yesterday or whatever come later. So as much as you can the, focus on your story of your character, what they are doing, what they want, what happens to them from scene to scene to scene? Where are they in the beginning? What are they trying to achieve? Where are they at the end of the play? Or at the, at the end of the story, if you want, you know? Okay, focus on the story, um, at least as much as you're focusing on the architecture of it. Because again, form and content are connected, like plot and character are the same thing, okay? So as much gotcha. as you can, tell yourself the story of your play. Gotcha. And when you're like holding on to that story, right? Like if the character says like, I want this, mm -hmm. you know, and you're sort of like trying to kind of like listen to that voice, you know, amongst the other, right, stuff, the noise. Um, is, there, is there anything that you would say like how to listen better to that character? Well, if they say, I want this, like follow that. You know what I mean? I want this. Okay. You want to be, you know, I don't know. You want like Hamlet, you want to uh, find out who killed your father and avenge your father's death. Okay. How are you going to go about that? You know, get into yeah. conversation with your character. How are you going to go about that? How do you want to achieve that? What are you going to do to get that? You know, does that make sense? So if your character totally. says, I want something, then your, your next question is, well, what are you going to do to get that? Who's in your way? Who's going to help you? Hmm. You know, oh, do you see what I'm saying? So, and again, if you're using a Shakespeare play, great. You can read other Shakespeare plays to really study the form. If you're, you know, if you're cool with that kind of architecture, you know, it's a great way to learn architecture. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Good question, man. Hi. Okay, so I might be on multiple screens having a weird Wi-Fi moment, but the next person is Bermuda. Can you hear us, Bermuda? Bermuda. Bermuda. Thea, can you actually unmute her? I'm in a little trouble. I I can't. Oh yeah. Can I? Yes, you can. Of course. Yeah, sometimes there's just a little delay there. There, oh, there you are. Vernita, you're oh, unmuted. Fantastic. I see you, Vernita. Hi, SLP. Hey. You were missed over the last few weeks. Oh, thank um, you. Yeah, no, thank you again. Um, excited that you're back. And it's really been encouraging um, participating in this workshop over the last few weeks. Um, I actually don't have a question today. I was just coming back to... Um, share that after my last question around my article on gratitude and COVID-19, I did finish it. It is now published. It's out in the world. And uh, it was totally helpful. Like the, my, um, very much my quarantine experience has the running theme is like the gentleness, gentleness, gentleness. And it was still relevant the next week when it went out. And um, yeah, so I, I just appreciated your support and it did get done. Oh, fantastic, Bernita. Congratulations. Woohoo. Great for you. Really, really great. Congratulations. Thank That's so why much. we're here. That's why we're here to cheer each other on. So great job. Yeah, thank what you. What are you working on now? Oh, great question. Oh. Um, I, what I was actually sketching this afternoon is uh -huh. I have, I guess I, now I do have a question. Um, <laughs> I have a um, autobiography that I want to help get done. Um, the, the subject is um, someone that I really admire, Norwell, I've worked with her. She has, um, I've had several discussions with her, you know, like when is your book going to come out? 
She's now in her early 80s mm -hmm. and has had this amazing life. You know, like she, she's the person that pulls out like, oh, yes, like this is where I was marching in Washington with, mm -hmm. you know, all the great leaders or, you know, mm -hmm. this is when I was backstage at such and such fashion show. So yeah. an amazing life. And but there's some block there. Um, there was someone that she's been working with. She's not happy with that writer, but I have not been able to persuade her to give me a shot at being the person that helps her write her book. Um, so just any thoughts on like what can be done when there is some block there with the subject that you want to write on or getting the person to open up because she's expressed she's not happy with her current writer but I don't know how to like kind of present myself as a potential person in, right in that. Well, she, right she's not happy I mean so you want to help someone write their uh, biography or autobiography you want to help someone write theirs and their they're working with a writer right now who's helping them but they're not happy with that writer and yet mm -hmm. they aren't ready to work with another writer specifically you yes so you really want to hear what i have to say what else do you want to write oh <laughs> like just let that go you think you know hey uh you know, put your, make your intentions clear. Mm -hmm. And if they aren't interested in working with you, you can always say, Hey, my door is always open. I'd love to work with you. Uh, and then work on, you know, turn your attention to something else that you want to work on. And maybe they'll come around and want to work with you in a month or so. Um, you can touch base with them in a month or so and say, just checking in. But I would, um, personally, um, I would, uh, wait until they turn toward you and want to work with you. Okay. Okay. That's, that's so, personally, that's what I would do. One other thought um, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask it because she has seen um, my writing and she has expressed that she feels that I'm a good writer. She feels like, like this is such a great piece or great articles that I've written. Mm -hmm. um, the one other idea was, do you think it would be helpful to say like, what if I wrote a page or what if I wrote a sample chapter that kind of gives and gives thought to the direction I'm thinking for this would that be helpful or is it am I just better off well I I mean I mean you know I like to you know it's like dating I like to go out with I mean I'm married now but you know I, I like to go out with people who want to go out with me I don't chase people you know what I'm saying I don't chase people so I feel like if you want to chase I mean there's a lot of stories sure you can go and woo her and write for her and and try to sure if, if you want to do that that's great that's a great idea <laughs> I, I, it is you know if, if someone you not know convinced. does not but no if someone does not she thinks you're a great writer she's gonna give if she wants to give you a chance great but um, it sounds like uh, she might be for, for, for who knows reason, maybe she has a contract signed with this person. You know, she is enmeshed with somebody who she is not pleased with. You know, it's, it's like, uh, you know, you're, you're trying to date someone who's in a relationship. Okay. Okay. Fair you know, enough. you can, you can show her your good writing. You can write something on spec. She can take it and say, Hey, it's my biography. I'm going to use it for my book and not hire you. You know, I, I would want you to, while you're doing, how about this? Do both. While you're doing, if you want to show her an example of your writing and show her what a wonderful writer you are, that's great, Vernita. And in the meantime, also think about something else that you want to write that's yours. Okay. 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 Just, just focus on yourself. Focus on you. You know, we can only, you know, it's, it's like the watch me work. Here I am. I'm sitting at my dining room table doing watch me work. People, you guys show up and ask questions. Great. If people don't show up, I can't help them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to run out and try to get people to, you know, you know, um, some people, uh, we can only do so much for folks. You can show her a work sample. Great. But in the meantime, I'm concerned about you and your writing and your writing that's coming from you. Because I hear you not 
giving that enough attention. That's oh. all. Okay. That's all. So I care about you. That's all. Thanks. So do both. How about, okay? okay? Okay. 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 I'll be back. Okay. Great. I'm glad. Thank you. I'll be here. <laughs> My husband All thought that right. was funny. Yeah. Up, up next, we got Tamar. Tamar, can you hear us? Let's see. Sorry for all the tech issues today. You never have tech issues. I know. I know. I think your internet was weird yesterday. It's like it's okay. a whole thing. It's like a whole uh, thing. Thea, can you unmute Tamar? Me? On it. Thank you. Can you hear me? I can yeah. hear you. Hey there. This I can, is my I first time. I can't, I can't see so you, Tamar. But it's oh. okay. I can I can hear you. But so I'll listen really closely. Okay then. Oh, um, there you are. Been, oh, yay! I've been wondering about rhythm and language lately because I'm in twelfth grade now, and our final project is giving a TED talk to the grade. I'm also doing a poetry slam with some friends, and though I know that rhythm is important, I find myself often tweaking it too much when I'm writing instead of focusing on getting my message out. And I know that rhythm is just one of many tools there are to, to do so. So I'm wondering how you approach, like how much time does it make sense to give to that aspect and that technique as opposed to looking at things on the whole. Um, the reason I'm asking you this is because I saw that um, you're a musician and a playwright. So I feel like you'll have good perspective on this. What do you think? Uh -huh. I am. Um... It's again, it's a delivery system. Rhythm is a delivery system, right? Even when mm -hmm. we're not trying to speak in a rhythmic manner, you can hear in the words, speak in a rhythmic manner. That's rhythm, right? Mm -hmm. Everything we say is, spoke, is in a rhythmic manner. If we want to convey, say convey our message, right? So mm -hmm. I would say, Focus on what you want to say, and the rhythm is going to reveal itself to you the more you focus on what it is that you want to say, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Maybe not. So would that mean like deprioritizing, like say rewriting a, a sentence a few times and more focus on getting it out and then coming back to it? Do you stand up and speak your words aloud when you try them out? No. Try that. Okay. Do you get your body into your language? No, I'll try that. Because language is a physical act. A lot of us think that it's something that goes on from your, you know, top of your head to your neck, right? It's an intellectual mm -hmm. exercise. Well, it involves your whole body. So when you speak, right, you're using <laughs> your whole body from your head to your feet all your fingers and your arms are moving. Not that you have to dance around like that. It doesn't have to be a choreo poem, Jesus Christ. It doesn't have to be that. You don't have to be like <laughs> Saki Shange, although that'd be cool, right? <laughs> you should employ rhythm. It's just, like, it's just like character. It's just like architecture. It's just like form and content. Rhythm is an integral part of, of your language. So what you wanna do is maybe when you read your piece out loud, stand up and deliver it. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. you're going to give a TED talk. Are you going to give your TED talk sitting down? No. Maybe. You're going to stand, right? Yeah. Are you going to move or are you going to just stand really still? Oh, I'm going to move. You're, oh, you're going to. So you you got to practice moving, girl. Right? Okay. Yeah. Right. So when you have it written, you have a first draft or a second draft or whatever. So then I want mm -hmm. you to try standing up and saying the words like you mean them. Mm -hmm. Right? Because you're not going to be like a. a, a a what? Does that go for while I'm in the middle of drafting it? Sure, why not? Okay. You can stand it, up and write. Okay. Sing it. You know, say it. You're gonna you're gonna say it out loud. It's a TED talk. It's not a scholarly paper that we sit and read, right? Even though those can be rhythmic and beautiful too. Put get mm -hmm. your body into it. All right. You know, Thank persu you. Yeah, persuade people move people to move people. I think you've got to be moved a little bit yourself. 
you know, language is a physical act. Remember, it's a whole body experience. You're transmitting energy to people. It's not just thoughts. It's energetic vibes and shit. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. And you're in 12th grade. Are you graduating? Yes. What are you guys going to do for graduation? Uh, I don't know yet, but I'm looking forward to hearing the Obama speak. That's going to be great. Where do you go to school? I go to Manhattan High School for Girls. Oh, congratulations, Tamara. Congratulations. Yeah, you're the class of 2020. We're counting on you to pull us through tomorrow. So thanks. Thanks for being fabulous. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you start moving, girl. You start moving. You got to start moving your whole body, getting into it. Okay. Thank All right. You. Thanks for stopping by. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Oh, you're hysterical. You got two computers. Here I am. We're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Next is Kathleen, and we're going to unmute. Did it work? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, uh, it's very cool to uh, browse the gallery and look at everybody who's here and just be so mystified about what they were writing in the first 20 minutes. <laughs> um, I'm a historian, so my question might be a little bit offbeat, but I'm looking for uh, tips on how to integrate more dialogue and anecdote into my, um, I hopefully not so dry history writing. Mm -hmm. I mean, somebody who's really good at this is like Hillary Mantle. Okay. I mean, her dialogue in her historical novels is just fabulous, but okay. I can't expire to that. But I thought a playwright would be a good person to ask. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't read much historical fiction, but I read like, I read years ago, like, uh, you know, biographies or like Simon Shama, you know, who mm -hmm. makes it. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. You know, so, so for me, history is about people, right? So you want to get, as you know, so you want to get as much of the, instead of just what they're doing, maybe what they're feeling, you know, um, I mean, this is all things you probably know already, though, Kathleen. Well, I don't you know? know. I just know that I've been doing it for a long time, but I don't do it well. And I write nonfiction history, not uh, historical fiction. Not historical uh -huh. fiction, but so no, you have to adhere history. closely to the historical record, right? Uh, yes, I definitely use a lot of sources and research. <laughs> right. And in, but in that historical record, you can, if they say... Um, you know, the, the historical figure went to town on foot, right? That day. I mean, maybe that's in the historical record, right? Mm -hmm. You can imagine, you can use your imagination maybe to fill in some of those gaps. Can you, are you allowed to do that? Uh, yeah, actually, you just gave me an idea. I'm doing this thing on seating on the subway. Okay. And maybe I should put thought balloons in for people like looking at each other and saying, oh, will she move my pa her packages if I stare at her enough? Or, you know, maybe maybe thought balloons would be like a, a light kind of technique to do this. Ex exactly. But thought balloons, I mean, whether you're writing a graphic novel or whether you're writing just regular text, mm -hmm. those thought balloons, what people are thinking. Mm hmm what they might be thinking given the appropriate historical context. Um, okay, well you know, cool. you know, just sort of you can your your imagination can enter into the lives of historical characters um, to fill in some of those gaps. You know, um, or you can take the snippets of letters that they've written and maybe expand on those or even use letters that they've written as dialogue. You know, um, just allow yourself a little bit of freedom. I think with a lot of times when either we write, you know, uh, we, we work with historical characters or write, you know, historical nonfiction, we feel very constrained, you know, mm -hmm. but I think we're allowed to use our imagination a little bit in appropriate ways that adheres to the historical character, I think. Yeah, thought bubbles are a great way to start. <laughs> great way to start and see you had that idea it's great it sounds great actually have fun with it kathleen thanks for the question thanks. amazing thank you kathleen um up next we're gonna have carol shiner wilson all right carol do we have you you have me hi, hi carol 
Hi, everybody. Hi. And uh, Kathleen, I just yesterday finished Hilary Mantel's The Mirror and the Light. Wow. Uh, wonderful insights to character all along the way, but it is arresting to read the last few pages as Cromwell is in the tower preparing for death and contemplating that and actually walks to the scaffold. It is, it's chilling and real. So wow. if you haven't read it yet, get at it. <laughs> My question is this, um, and I'm a writer. I cannot presume to have written a play or a novel or much of anything, but I do love, I'm a reader too, and I love to read. <laughs> My question is about objects, concrete objects. So for example, and I mentioned it um, in, the, in the chat, when you have something like a watermelon in Last Black Man, or you have those incredibly fragile characters, the little animals in Glass Menagerie, um, objects work magic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have a little piece where it's a kind of a, a tortured guy feeling very, very guilty. He's an addict, he's relapsed, and he's sitting and he's trying to, to get all of this off his chest and he's tearing at a handkerchief and and that object to me expresses a lot so maybe part of what i'm asking badly is uh to kind of help me help us unravel the magic you know i can recognize when it's the right object um because the writer has done such a damn good job could you talk to us a little bit more about objects and how yeah there's this concreteness but but they take on an incredibly meaningful light life of their own that's a beautiful question i i don't know if i have an answer um right <laughs> I, I think i think the oh, an answer i have is anything can be the thing that's what I, I, I actually believe. Um, okay, so the glass menagerie, great. So he decided to choose an object, right? And he just, it's like it, it, it was a bell. This is a bowl, you know, and he just kept ringing it, right? He just kept looking at it, contemplating it. And I mean, I'm guessing, I don't know how he wrote the, Tennessee Williams wrote that play, but he contemplated it and it expanded in his mind and helped make the world of the play. For example, Last Black Man, my play, The Watermelon, expanded and made the world of the play. Any object can do that. You see what I mean? The handkerchief, my question is, whose handkerchief is it? Was it given to him? Was it his mother's? Was it his dad's with a monogram? You know what I mean? Um, does it have a smell? You know, any object can, can, can work magic. If you apply your uh, attention to it, it's a rock. This can be a magical object, right? Um, if you apply your attention to it. And that's, I think that's the, that's the key. Uh, a timer <laughs> can be mad. Any object has magic. It's not like you have to pick the right object. You know what I mean? It's that you have to attend to it properly. And, and it will sing. All objects will sing. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Oh, beautiful. Thank you. You know, you know, okay. So, so, and that's why we're lucky because every single, I mean, the phone will, will sing or a rock or a tube of, you know, I don't know, toothpaste or whatever. Um, you know, we just, you, you have to focus on them and they will sing forth for you and provide you with all the richness that your work, your story, your novel, your, uh 
play needs. They will also maybe attract other objects or people or, you know, they will start attracting, they will magnetize things to them. Um, you know? Okay. Great. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you. It's a beautiful question, Carol. Thank you, Carol. Um, we've got about five minutes left. Um, and we're going to go on to Hassan. Are you with us? Yes. Hi. Hello. Hi. Again. How are you doing, man? Hi, I'm good. I'm good. I feel a bit naughty of asking one more question, but I, I, I'm going to sneak it's it in. It's been a little while. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I've I've done this rewrite of my this big epic play that is like a Romeo and Juliet uh, uh -huh. type of story, but set in in, a, in an Arabic uh, context. And I I think my main characters are doing well. Uh, I have three main characters: a kind of Romeo and Juliet and an Iago kind of figure. Oh, great! Um, and their uh, their objectives and their obstacles and everything I think is in place. Great. I think where I where the play is weak is on some of the more secondary characters. Now there are, there are about twenty characters altogether in this play. I mean, some of them are just soldiers or messengers, mm -hmm. but some have more more kind of um, weight. So my question is this: Is it helpful to write out for every character for all the twenty, uh, even if it's very little? What is their objective? What is their obstacle? And what is uh, what is preventing them from getting it, you know, the classic stuff, to write the, all of that out for the 20 characters when I, doing, when I do my redrafting. Mm -hmm. uh, with, with that, do you think that's a helpful strategy? Because I, I, I worry particularly about the parents of the, of the two couple, that they often want the same thing. So you then wonder, well, why do I have two characters when I could have one? And I want mm -hmm. to have two characters. I want to have two sets mm -hmm. of parents, mm -hmm. but maybe they're not distinct enough. Will that, will that strategy to write out the objectives be helpful or is there some other strategy? Yeah, are, so are you concerned that you're gonna find that you don't need certain characters? Is that why you're holding back from this strategy? My gut feeling is that the, I, I need the two parents for the two sets of parents, just like in Romeo and Juliet, we have sure. both the Capulets and the Montagues. Sure. But sometimes I feel, uh, particularly for the mothers, I feel they're kind of following the fathers because it's a patriarchal society where the men have more of a, right. and, that, and, and I haven't yet figured out ways for them to be more active as independent characters. Right. And I can just imagine being in a rehearsal with actors and, you know, the actresses asking me, you know, what is my objective? What is my overall arc and all that? And, mm -hmm. I, and, I, and I, I worry that they've repeated some of the same beats as the fathers. Right, uh, right. So... I would say employ that strategy that you talked about. Go through, I mean, are you, do you have time? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course you do. So you got a little time. So I would say employ that strategy. You know, you've got 20 characters, that's plenty of time. You got, you know, that'll take you a couple days, right? Two or three days, maybe a week, maybe at the most to write out, even if it's just a line, this soldier wants such and such, you know? I think the, 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 what's probably, you probably don't have a clear view of the, 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 the parents. You haven't just done enough digging. So right. you just take a little bit of time to think about it. What does she want? She says, she might say she wants what the husband wants, but what does she really want? I mean, in cultures that are patriarchal or even, <laughs> even in this culture, a lot of wives, yeah, I want what my husband wants. The guy goes, you know, in the kitchen. She's like, <laughs> I, can't. I got my own opinion here. I just say, I just agree with him because if I don't, then I'll be in trouble. But <laughs> I got my own thing going. So a lot of women operate like that. Uh, a lot of men do too, you know, creating harmony in the household. And then when the spouse is at a distance, they speak their true mind. This might be true of, of, of some of your characters. Um, you got to do a little digging. Okay, that's great. You got the time, do your digging uh, and and yeah, and create lovely. And then you do your digging on paper and then you do a pass for each character. So when you're rewriting, you go through and you say, I'm going to follow character A and follow her through. And okay, it's good. Now I'm going to look at character B and I'm going to follow her and I'll follow him. And, okay, you just go through and you do a pass, just kind of checking in with each character through your whole play. Right. You know, so first maybe, you do a sheet. Yeah, go ahead. 
maybe uh, you just gave me a thought as I as you were saying that maybe my problem is that I've got the parents in too many scenes together, and maybe what I haven't done is to separate them out as characters and have them be in scenes with other people where some other, something else is revealed. Yes, that, very good. Yeah, very maybe good. that's maybe that's a strike. Yeah, great. Yes, 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 great. yes. Very great. good. Great idea. Great. See, great. you had a great idea. <laughs> great. Thank you so much. Thank You're you so welcome much. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's six o'clock. It's six o'clock. We did it. We made it through. <laughs> Tech and all. I'm all so right. sorry. <laughs> no, no, this is great. Audrey, you're fantastic. You're fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much. As always, sign up by 3 p.m. Eastern time every single day, and I will send you a link between 3 and 4.30 p.m. Yeah. Thank you. Love you. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow.